This is just a little intro to the video that I'm going to share. I was fortunate enough to interview a teacher of mine, Marilyn Dunnow. I met her uh, during my undergrad time in college at CAP 21 at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts. And to this, well, not to this day, but I still study with her when I'm in town. The last time I saw her was back in March before everything shut down. Marilyn is not only a teacher of mine, a mentor, a friend, and more importantly, Marilyn has a long history of work during the golden age of musical theater. She was in the original company of West Side Story. She made her Broadway debut previously in On Your Toes, um, was a part of the original company of Gypsy, Applause, and King of Hearts. Um, and even though this is it's kind of short, I, she could talk for, I could listen to her talk forever about her experience um, both on Broadway and teaching and also a lot of the TV she did. Um, she was also in the movie the, when the, the Night They Raided Minsky's and was a part of a sister act with her sisters that performed quite a bit on variety shows, including The Ed Sullivan Show. And um, yeah, I just, I wanted to share this with you because she has a lot of great anecdotes, a lot of great stories from, from some of the original processes of working with these great choreographers, the likes of Jerome Robbins, Ron Fields, Michael Bennett, Bob Fosse. And um, I do have to preface this by saying that the internet connection wasn't that great um, on her end. But so it does get a little choppy, but for the most part, you should be able to follow along when it gets a little creaky, just hang in there. Um, I do try to have her repeat some of the anecdotes that I think were missed. And um, yeah, I've been wanting to do this for years and I actually would like to do this in some official capacity with her because she has a wealth of knowledge and can tell you some great details that to this day are still very vivid in her mind, especially of that original production of West Side Story. I'm really excited to share this with you. Please enjoy my my interview with the amazing Marilyn Dunnell. Great, so we're recording. So Marilyn, thank you so much Hi. for joining us. Um, oh. This is for um, my undergrad musical theater dance class and I just want them to get to know people in the industry. Um, and I had two friends actually talk today who are currently in the industry, who've been in a Broadway show and tours and I wanted them to mm. meet you because you've had such a, a, a long history with the musical theater and some of the iconic shows of the golden age of the musical theater. Um, mm. And so if you could just, let's, I guess, let's just start at the beginning. How did you get started with dancing? Oh, how I started with dancing? It was um, because I have two older sisters that are dancers. And my older sister, um, she used to, when she would walk, she, her feet would turn in. And so uh, my mother took her to a doctor and the doctor said, well, dance class would be the best thing for her. So Dorothy and Lillian were very close in age. So they started, but then I, because I was um, four years younger than my one sister, but five and a half with the other sister, they had, I would take their shoes. In fact, they were even point shoes and I would walk around the house with the point shoes. So then my mother said, well, I guess I have to send her too. So I started dancing to about maybe seven, eight, eight, something like that. And, um, but how we got into New York was my father, my father was an art director and uh, he did a lot of layouts and he did a layout for this woman, Lucille Stoddard, who did the um, dance masters. So he did the whole layout for her. And she was the one, her name was Lucille Stoddard. She was the one that said, if your three daughters want to take dance, they've got to come to New York. So when I was in the fifth grade in Cranford, because I came from Cranford, New Jersey, uh, we commuted, commuted into the city. And I took class actually in the CBS building on 53rd Street and Broadway. I would take a ballet class from Shelley from five to six, then a tap class from Ernest Carlos from uh, six to seven, and a jazz class from seven to eight from Charlie Morrison. And then we would go home. So after a year about that, my father decided we better move into New York. So my father bought a brownstone on 76th Street and, Broad and um, Columbus Avenue. And that's how we started. So that's how. And then it became, you know, I would take classes. And then we all went to PCS, Professional Children's School. And even my brothers, because I had two brothers then that were 
So they, we all moved in and they all went to professional surgery school for one year. Then my, uh, my mother got them into uh, Dwight, uh, different schools. Because it was really, PCS is more for kids that want to be in the profession. So, so and the rest yeah. is... Yeah, I mean, I mean, it seems like from very early on, you knew exactly that this was the path that was so. going to happen. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. It just it just sort of went. My my mother and father went with it. Yeah. So then, so, what was your transition into working professionally? Well, I I did some TV shows. I did like the Ted Mac Amateur when I was really young, and then I did. Um, Oh, there was another one, Kids and Company. That was a kids show, but I did get paid. I'd say the main show I did was uh, Star Time, and Star Time. I did that that little number that you saw, that I showed you that that funny number with the the yes. I was about twelve, and that show. I guess that was my real professional because Leslie Uggins was on, and Connie Francis. Connie Francis would sing, and she had her accordion, and uh, so that was. And then from there, I did that show. And my first Broadway show was when I was 14. And that was uh, On Your Toes. And my sister was in the tap line. They had two dance lines. They had a tap line and they had the ballet line. But uh, one of the ballet dancers, and they were all ballet Roos dancers. Paula Lloyd, she was from ballet Roos. She left. And so I auditioned because my sister knew I could do it. and. I got the job when I was 14 is, as, as, as one of the Bally Roos dancers, as an adult, not as a child. That's insane and that then you were from 14. There, yeah, and then from there, I think I was 16 when I did Motorama for Michael Kidd. And, uh, and that summer, I did Jones Beach with Lawrence Melchior, with Rod Alexander and Bambi Lynn. And Buzz Miller was in it. And um, uh, Paul Taylor. Paul Taylor and Stuart Hodes. Now they all made careers after that, companies. And then from there, I think it's when I auditioned for West Side and then I was West Side. I think that was the next thing I did. So yeah. just to rewind, uh, choreographer of On Your Toes was? Oh no. Balanchine. Yes, so then what was it like getting to work with George Balanchine? Well, the thing is, at that time I was a replacement. You, you work with just the, yeah, you know who sets you in. You know it's it's not going to be, but it was his his um, choreography. So and and I I was able to do it. That was another way. There was another show I did ballet too. Was your show of shows with uh, Emma Jean Coco and Sid Caesar? Yeah, and I did I did a ballet thing on that. And Jimmy Starbuck was the choreographer. And I think I was I was about fourteen or fifteen. The same I did that television show. Yeah. That, that was yeah. So you replaced an on your toes, and you're doing all this television, which is awesome. I I, I actually, um, after you sent that clip of you um, practicing and I, knowing the video clip of you and your sisters, I actually want to go back and see if I can track down just to watch what TV and um, variety shows were like back then, because we don't really have that right now. Well, yeah, because they they you couldn't you know you did it. That was it. If if, if there was something wrong, I remember I did a. Um, a TV show for Danny Daniels, uh, I think it was the Bing Crosby or something, and we had hula hoops. Now you know, if you don't, if you drop your hula hoop, forget it. Well, I mean, we were all, all of us were nervous, but we, we all we were fine. But I mean, it was, it was scary. And then also, you had terrible, like the Sullivan Show. Every time I did the Sullivan Show, your, uh, it was in the CBS building on Fifty Third, but it's, it was. Um, a floor, you know, so you were dancing uh, all those TV uh, um, places were cement and very small, small spaces, you know, so not great for the body. That. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the biggest <laughs> oh, thing no, I it wanted, was terrible. yeah, um, and it's just the worst on your joints. Um, but the big thing I want to talk to you about, which is I could listen to you talk about for days is West Side Story, um, just because Obviously, you were part of the original company, and you really were there throughout the process. So I'd love to hear about what rehearsals were like, what it was like working with Jerry Robbins, what his process was like, um, and just what the rehearsal process was like leading up to opening. Well, the rehearsal process was, first of all, the Jets did not mingle with the Sharks. 
that was obvious. You're not supposed to talk to them at lunch hour. You don't go near them. But we rehearsed. Now, I don't know exactly where their sharks rehearsed, but I remember the Jets rehearsed on 56th Street. It was, uh, it used to be, I think, the Chester Hale studio. It was, you walk up a flight of stairs and there's, I don't even think the studio's there anymore. And it was a long, and I remember just the Jets rehearsing there. It was, it was a, a long time before, and we had eight weeks of rehearsal, which is a little uh, un, unusual. You don't have that, that many weeks. And, um, and Jerry, the first day, I think we were not together. I was with, with the Jets. Um, we were told that we had to have a story where we came from, which I think is, is, is great. I mean, I think that's every, every choreographer should be Ron Field was so much about that. Uh, and so that made it a big impression on. And I, I pretended like I was the youngest one into the group because I was like the third, there was like three Jet girls and Wilma was, uh, was uh, Graziella was Riff's girlfriend. And Velma was just another, I don't think she had a specific boyfriend, but I was like the new one in the group. So it was like, they. so that's how I played it in the show, which was great because Jerry, everyone had, you know, Graziella, she was the, she was the big deal and stuff like that. Although, you know, when we were out of town, the, you know, the dance hall, it's then the Cheetah is competition with supposedly Riff and his girlfriend. But I never knew this until... I saw Wilma years and years ago that Lee Becker did that, do, you know, a, a competition next to Cheetah. It made no sense because why would Riff use, would use uh, anybody's, you know? He would at least use not another a female who she wanted to be, she wanted to be the gang. And I never knew that it was because Jerry was having an affair with um, Lee Becker out of town and she wanted more dance, you know? She, she ago. So, so um, working with Jerry, I did an awful lot of uh, work. I loved, I loved how he worked. I loved watching him. I love, I mean, I think I learned so much about jazz working with Jerry because his style was very, very loose. He was very cool. And then he would do those sharp movements. So, which I think now I sort of lose that he had so many dynamics in his dance, you know, different levels of, of dance. Uh, and, um, but he wasn't the most easiest person to work with. You know, I mean, he was actually very nice to me. The only thing he ever said to me was in the dance hall, there's the, there at the end, there's the cha-cha and there's Tony and Maria. There's one shark couple, one jet couple. I was the jet couple. And then you'd sort of do that a little bit. So cold and they have that dialogue. Back then. I have that was the correction I ever got. That was good because he could be, he could be really, he could dig the knife into you. Yeah. Now, why, why do you think, um, I mean, I, it seems like he's very method in just the way that he separated everyone and in the way yes. that he would interact. Um, I do have a question to go back to that anecdote that you sure. said about anybody's, but uh, when the show then came to New York, did it then she still switch? Did it. Oh, she still did it. So do you know when it actually changed? She still did it. No, she, she still did it. She still did it. No, oh. Wilma never did it. As far as I was in the show, and I was in the show, say we started rehearsals in the summer, I went for like a year, because then I, I did something summer stock, or oh, I did Louise and Carousel, and then I did Gypsy. So as far as I was in it, Wilma did not do it. Interesting. Yeah. Now, to talk, I know that the show initially wasn't received very well, even though all of you yeah. very much believed in it. Um, how did that affect you um, with the critics? And did it affect the, um, uh, how, how you perceived the show? Or, or did people eventually, or did the critics say one thing and people enjoy it and not follow what the critics thought? Well, I think like when we were out of town, I think when we were opening night, there was no applause really because I think it, and it just weren't used to a musical with death both acts, 
maybe the first doc death, but then a happy ending. But that, that ending, it was like, they, people didn't really know how to relate to it. It was very different. I think once we came to New York, New York was more sophisticated. And I think they, but it was still, and then I think the reviews were, but you know, we didn't, we didn't, the Tony, Music Man, the Tony that year. So we didn't win Best Show. Right. <laughs> to, uh, Jerry won uh, Best for a Choreographer, but not, we did not win Best Show, Broadway Show. It was, it was Music Man that won. See, they wanted something, Broadway still wasn't used to, it was more of a drama with dance and more opera, operatic drama. And people were not, I mean, they loved it. I think they appreciated and the music because how can you not go wrong with that music? And I think people loved it for that, but I don't think they were really ready. I think, I think it changed Broadway, West Side. I agree. I think that was the main thing is that. I think yeah. 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 Um, just to talk, because um, yeah. I, I know that um, a lot of people know this, but Jerry um, worked a lot with the Jets, but it was really Peter Gennaro who worked with the Sharks and their material. Um, yes. What can you tell us? I mean, I know that because he was very method and he tried to keep everyone separate, did that bleed over into how um, the actors treated each other or was there that? Yeah, yeah. you know, because I, I was young. I was 17 and, you know, I had my family was here, so I was, I was always had family, and I was taking class. I was my last year of high school. I wanted to get out. I had regions to do, and I remember now. This is just even the Jets, the Jet boys, were sort of after the Jet girls. So the, the way the dressing rooms were, you would go up because the ladies' dressing room, the girls was way up on the top. So we would go up these stairs, and there was the dressing room with. Uh, David Winters, Tony Mordenti, Eddie Roll, and Grover. Well, I'll tell you, going past that, it always made me nervous. I even thought like, well, it's like they were attacking even the Jet girls. They knew I was young. And it was like, so I was even scared of the Jet boys sometimes, you know. And then I'd go up to, up to, the, to the dressing room. No. Wow, that's amazing. Um, no, Jerry really instilled that. You're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand that, but I also and think that. And then look that... at Tony. Go ahead, yeah. No, well, I mean, look at Tony Mordenti was a jet and Cheetah was a shark and they married, so you figure that out. <laughs> right, it just, if it's meant to happen, it's meant to happen. Yeah. Um, just to move on, just because, I mean, I, you know, I could talk about West Side forever with well, you, but. Jerry, I, you know what also Jerry used to do, which was sneaky. He would, he, sometimes you knew when he was in the audience. But a lot of times he didn't want you to know he was in the audience. He wanted to see how the show played. So I remember once he was in the wings because he never, he would be in the wings, but he would hide in the wings. So you couldn't really see him. And I remember one day because at the end of the dance hall, I danced with baby John that, you know, the music goes, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da, ba -dum -bum, ba -da -da -bum. Well, I was dancing. That's the end when they start doing the dialogue. So I'm with, uh, with um, David. As we come off into the wings, who steps out in the wings and pulls David's arm and something David didn't do right. And I just went, whoa, right up to the dressing room. I might be stopped by Jerry Robbins. So he would do those sneaky things. You know, he would scare, he'd scare you, you know. And if you knew he was in the audience, then you were all nervous. Everyone was nervous. You had to be really on your toes. But you know what? That was a show that I always wanted to do the best. There was something about that show you just always wanted to do. Sometimes it wasn't the best you did performance. But you went out there. I was always, when it, in the dance hall, when I came on those chenets across, that my, I was always something about it. Then the music. I mean, it just it made you always want to do a good show. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, it speaks volumes about you as a performer and, and the wanting to give the material the best, but also it speaks volumes about the material because the material was so good and it was so yes. integrated and, and beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, what you said, that story about coming off stage and Jerry being in the, in the wings, it just was a different generation. And there was a lot of those directors yeah. and choreographers who worked out of fear, you know, having everyone oh, be, yes. you know. Yeah, he was, he was, he did have, he did have fear. So then somehow, I don't think I was so much afraid. Maybe I was too innocent or too, 
not realizing because I had other things. I had school and family and stuff. Maybe I just took it as a job, you know. I, I think I realized later on in life what a great show it was that I was in. Yeah. yeah. That I did realize later on. Yeah. And so uh, moving on, I mean, just because while yeah. we're on the topic of Jerry Robbins, you're um, Gypsy. Oh, yeah. What was it like doing Gypsy? Obviously, not as much dance for the girls and, and uh, getting to work with Ethel Merman. Uh, yeah, she was a piece of cake. <laughs> well, tell us, what was, what was rehearsal, uh, what was the rehearsal process like? Well, she, we were, well, well yeah, so the thing is, the Hollywood Blondes didn't do anything. I mean, we ended up doing absolutely nothing, you know? And we rehearsed up at the, it's the old Amsterdam theater on 42nd street, but we rehearsed up on the roof. Well, like there was like a, a, a I guess it was like a, a stage. It was like a stage up on the top of the, the uh, Anderson, uh, uh, Amsterdam theater. So um, we rehearsed there, but we were, we didn't get into rehearsal much later because we, we, didn't, we weren't even in the first act uh, at the beginning. We were basically in the second act. Uh, so he did rehearse the first act and then we started the second act and then he did do some changes in that, as I told you in um, that number have an egg roll where the department and I had a little crossover singing a little obligato he, and Ethel Merman had that cut. So that was that. And then um, the number that we did, the, the extra, extra, and look at the headlines, that was cut. I had some acrobatic things in it. There was other dancing, but I think they just wanted, I think Merman had a lot of say to this. She wanted, no, just get the act. The act is supposed to be terrible. And now we're heading on because Louise is going to be, and we're going to make the Hollywood Blondes. Because we were in Hollywood Blondes when we, when we did the Tory Adorables. We had like, I had a big red wig and, you know, and, but then see, so they wanted, she wanted that number to be short, quick. See, it's terrible. We got to do something. And so then we were the Hollywood Blondes, and then we just had a couple of lines, and then we really didn't do anything. And in the end, we did the Christmas tree. We're all on the Christmas tree, you know? So it's, it was not much of a <laughs> show, but it was a job. <laughs> right. I, I'm very curious because of what we just talked about with Jerry Robbins being this kind of authoritative, fearful leader. Yeah. I mean, at that point, Ethel Merman was also a very well-known personality. Oh, yeah. So what was, what was that like between the two of them working together, being so well, strong-willed? I, you, but you know, we never really saw that because we were only called on when we were supposed to do the Tory Adorables or the scene where we come into the theater, the striptease theater, and Merman only has a few lines there with the strip teasers, and then you see the Hollywood blondes. So there wasn't that much inactivity with, with Merman. The only time, I mean, she, she was very cheap. Uh, Christmas, uh, we all got a bottle of you know, and she didn't have our names on it. And there was a big box in front of her dressing room, and all you had to do was pick. Oh, Marilyn, you're a little choppy. It was like it was like John, like after you know, just a you know, after class, you just put a little something on to feel bit, you know, so you don't stink from class. Yeah, Marilyn, you were and, you, you broke up a little it, bit. She, that was our Christmas present. You broke oh, up yeah? a little okay, bit. Can what? you? Um, your uh, it looks well. like your Wi-Fi connection's a little weak. Um, there you are. Can you just tell that oh, story really? real quick again oh. about what um, the Christmas gifts that she got? Own a, um, a toilet water company. And it was like, Jean, it's still out? I'm out? I'm in and out or what? Am I there? You're, you're, you're there now. There? Sorry, it's just been a little in and out, but you're back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, I I know, and this happened, I know when I would do it with, when Lori and I would, and Sue would get together. Um, so she owned this company. So for Christmas, she had a big box of these bottles with no names on it, any of them. Didn't have any, like my name or anyone's name. And how you do is just to pick up a bottle and that was your Christmas present. So what we did, all the Hollywood Blondes did, we doused ourselves with it before we went on to do our Tory Adorables. And I think, because she opened the second act, she opened it up with that, that one song that you get. 
and together, and then it goes right into the Hollywood Blondes, the, the Tory Adorables. So I know she got a little from all that perfume that we put on. Because it was terrible. Here's this big woman, and she gives us a dollar, a dollar of, you know, toilet water, and not even our names on it. No, nothing. Just pick a bottle. Pick a bottle. <laughs> I mean, pick a bottle. It was a bottle of wine, okay, but not a bottle of crappy <laughs> toilet water. <laughs> That's hilarious. And she did, and she did have a mouth on her. I will say, because you know, if you open up the second act, I mean, we didn't open it exactly, but with the next number, you had to be on stage, you know, for the second act. So you're, you know. But boy, she did have the mouth. She cursed up a storm. Yeah. Wow. So, but I think she was I think she was fabulous for it. For, yeah. I mean, I think it was the best, best Rose, Mama Rose. Although I think Ty and Daly would have been very good too. I didn't see her. But Merman had, she played it with just one of the best for her kids. She wasn't mean. Some of them, some of them I've seen, they played it like Patty Lapone. I think she played Rose very mean. And, um, you know, oh, and that, and that was the other thing. Remember I was telling you that we, that because we are, we were all, we had to be there for a half hour, that Faith Dane who played Mazeppa was an artist and that we all, we all painted and I sold two of my paintings to uh, June Havoc, which was Gypsy's sister, Charcoal's. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. I mean, it's very different. Right. You're coming to the theater and in half hour you're painting, you're painting a picture. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of, that's so nice to come to work and yeah. just you know do yeah, something yeah. to get the time by. I didn't have to put makeup on. Well, like, first of all, Jerry put me with glasses. He had to give me a prop, which I, which I worked. I worked at like being you know with the glasses, kind of goofy, and uh, and I used that. But all he had to do was put lipstick on. Basically, <laughs> there was oh, no God. makeup. What the, what a, a a sweet show to to collect a paycheck. Um, yeah, yeah, and 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 the show was a is a great show. Though. Oh it was, yeah, it's such yeah. a great. Um, it's like perfectly written, just just from a yeah. standpoint of just structure, um, and to yeah. get to be a part of that. Um, okay, yeah. there's so much I want to talk to you about, but I I do want to shift into um. Uh, your teaching, just because I know we're for we're fast forwarding a couple of centuries at this point, but sure, yes. um. You got into teaching, and that's how I know you, and you were my ballet teacher, and you still are my ballet teacher. And one of the things that I really instill in my students is um, there's, I don't, I try to teach technique, but it's not a technique focused class just because it, there's not a lot, enough time. And so the emphasis on this class, which I think is very important to anyone who wants to be involved in the musical theater, is storytelling. And I'd yes. love to just have you talk about, I mean, we've talked about this in to great detail, but even as a ballet teacher, you know, t going through yeah. bar and adagio and teaching classic ballet, how important it is to storytell even through ballet and your thoughts on that. Oh, well, I think, I think, remember I was saying to you that I think like hands and their feet are so important that you just, just a, an expression with your hand, you could be sharp or it could be soft. I mean, you have to. I don't see much emotion and from a lot of the students that I've had, there's just, they just do it, but I don't feel anything from the heart. I don't feel anything. And it's a story. And it's the same thing with, with uh, dyna dynamics in your dance. That's what I think is part of storytelling because, you know, something is sharp or something is sad or something is this. And you don't just on one level. I think a lot of dance is just on one level. It's just pow, 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 pow. And I think years ago, dance wasn't like that. You can look at all the old videos of movies and things that Gene Kelly did and Fred Astaire. There, there are a lot of mo uh, uh, moments when it's very soft and slow and then, boy, they hit you. And it's a story. They, that I think is missing. I think that's missing. It's, it's too, many, too many tricks going on. Uh, how, how, can you, how can you get your leg? How big a jump? That's wonderful if you can do it, if you can execute it, but that's not the most important thing. You've got to convey a story. Why are you there? Why are you doing that? And in, in, in ballet, I do it so much because I'm, I'm always saying when I do like a porta bra, take that hand out, you know, to the, you know, as far out as you can do, stretch that, you know, because you're dancing with your body. We're not dancing, we're not speaking. So you speak with your body. I think it's very, very important. And, and I you, think a lot of the choreographers, well, sorry. Well, no, I was just going to say, um, you, you got that from working with, yeah. 
Do you think you got that from working with people like Jerry, uh, Jerry Robbins and all these yes. choreographers yeah. who instilled that because you, yeah. you didn't train in, like, in college, that you, your college was <laughs> life. Yeah. Oh, did I uh, yeah, I just got off children's school. I was already working, like yeah, like West had my last year of high school. Did you right. Again? And so okay. it, you lost me. No, I got, I got yeah. your back. It just so lied. yes, so yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no, def definitely. I mean, Jerry, the first day of rehearsal, which, what, who are you? Who's your mother, father? You know, who's your father or drunk? Is your mother this? So from from then on, that was the first. All the the things I did before that, like even when I did. Um, Motorama. It was it was a it was an industrial, and uh, I, I was sixteen when I did that show for for uh, and and you know um, Michael Kidd is very um, athletic kind of thing, and because and my sister was in that, we could do acrobats and so, but it was more that was just that's different. It, it's just doing a number because it's a car. It's it's the car. So I mean, there's no story to that, you know. So when you do a show like Industrials, there's usually no stories to that. Um, and that was hard. I tell you, the, some of my kids are always saying how hard it is in this. And I was 16. I was in 10th grade. I did six shows a day. Um, we traveled. We went to uh, Florida, Boston, San Francisco, New York. And I had to learn geometry in between those shows. And, you know, six, 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 I was doing that. Uh, the only one that's you know so it, it was hard it wasn't easy yeah. i think you got me i you're still now of course oh can no. you see me um, yeah, i can see okay you're just you're going in and out um yeah. but yeah. You, we got the, the whole know. thing about the industrials which is great like it's hard work what we do and yeah, um definitely. Uh, I think it's great what you told about the storytelling. I have a, 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 my favorite memory of you actually was when we were dancing on, I think it was a Saturday uh, class um, at Old New Dance Group. And it was like St. Patrick's Day. And we were doing a Petit yeah. Allegro and John was playing, you know, da 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 And at right. the end of it, you just looked at us and you said, what was that? I should... I should see jewels on your feet. You, your feet should tell a story and I should see beautiful jewels and all I see are ugly rocks just dangling from your ankles. But it's true because that it's, it's that well, expression that of true. movement. Well, yes, it is true. Yes, I mean, right. I mean, your feet and your head, there's, I mean, you can just come out on stage and just the way you hold, but it's also the way you hold your whole body too. It's not just, it's just your hands and feet. It's right. the way you communicate, the way you communicate to the audience, communicate. Yeah, I don't With know if there's body. a lot of that. Yeah, it's true. yeah. Um, yeah just because we do, we do have to wrap up. Um, do you have any yeah. like favorite memories um, oh. from performing? Like, is there one that like sticks out where that you just you'll always remember that moment, whether it was being in a show or watching a show, um, that you remember just from your your vast performing career? Well. Well, I think the opening night of West Side was was thrilling. I just thrilling, and the last show I did, King of Hearts, was one of my favorite shows. I, I, I there was Ron again storytelling. Everyone was. You see, Hamilton was the little sexy girl, and uh, Isabel Farrell was the, the the little maid, and so we were all crazy. But then we came out. Show I always I just enjoy that show so much to do. Um, I don't know if I have any specific moments, you know, I don't know. I can't remember that, but um, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, it seems like I the, mean, I was so, that yeah, West Side I, you know, was just so special. Oh, that was, and as I said, I mean, I did, I did Baker Street. I did, well, I did La Belle. I did uh, La Belle Helene. In fact, uh, when I was doing La Belle, we were doing our act with my sisters. And at that time, we could have done... Uh, Atlantic City with Dean Martin and op opening act with, and we, we, we were the opening act and then Dean Martin but I had this nice big part <laughs> to show La Belle so of course we didn't do the act <laughs> so meanwhile you never know what, what could have happened then if we were with Dean Martin right but, yeah, you, just, you, you know you life goes on 
you met yeah. so many incredible but people and what? people that you've just met so many incredible people and people that we're I'm currently studying right now. So it's just nice to hear someone who's had a firsthand account with some of these people. Um, and so thank you so much for um, sharing those memories. I think it's just, I, you know, I could listen to you forever tell these stories and I still say, no, it's just, it's just, Oh, you know, and what is so different now is the way you, you, you audition. I audition everything on a stage and it made, it made a world of difference to go out on the stage and sing your song. And it was, and it was great for the, the producers and directors and choreographers to see how you handle being on stage. Now you're in it. And as I told you before, I never was mic'd until I did ballroom for Michael, uh, uh, Mike, what was his name? Jerry Mitchell. Jerry Mitchell. And everyone thought, oh, you've got to be kidding. I said, no, I've never been mic'd. Because you didn't, you know. So it, it, those things are very different, very different. I mean, I really, I'm glad that I performed in the time I did. Yeah, you were definitely more, born in the right yeah, time. Was, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I still think that someday you need to find someone who will write your book because you have so many amazing stories. I didn't, I don't, I didn't know that Ethel Merman story. I think that's awesome. And I just think that you have so much knowledge and are just still so, yeah. like these memories are still so, um alive in your brain which i love so thank you for sharing yeah. oh yeah but i just want to say one thing for your students i just want to say how lucky they are to have you as a teacher chris thank you. you're a wonderful teacher and you're a wonderful person and i always thank you. wish you the thank you yeah. and i i mean likewise i still to this day i mean i i still take your class and i still love to I know. hang out I with you well, well there's no class but hopefully hopefully soon we don't know yeah, so, fingers I, uh, crossed when and yes. when everyone can be healthy. But thank you again yeah. for this, Marilyn. Oh. And um, let's talk soon, okay? Okay. Yeah. Right. Love you. Bye, Marilyn. Love you. Bye.